This is the Ektar H35 half frame 35 millimeter camera. So while we're here talking about this camera, there's a couple of things that I want to detail about it. One, because this is a half frame camera, think of it as a horizontal 35 millimeter slide that's being split down the middle. Ugh. So a lot of people actually may worry that the image quality on this is lower because you're splitting the frame, but technically you're getting the same image quality as a 35 millimeter piece of film if you just imagine yourself literally cutting that negative in half. So if you took a picture of two people standing side by side with a 35 millimeter camera that was not split frame, essentially you would get the same image quality as if you had taken two portraits. <laughs> if you put them together, you're, you're, you're not getting less image quality, you're just getting half the amount of the frame. You know, uh, does that make sense? So the build quality for this camera is actually really good. This is probably one of the best constructed fully plastic point and shoot cameras that I've come across. I love the feel of this painted plastic part at the bottom. It almost feels like vinyl, but I believe it's just like a, a matte kind of paint on top of textured plastic, but it works. This camera feels sturdy. It feels solid. When I shake it, I don't hear a lot of like, here, I'm going to hold the leaves. I don't hear a lot of like pieces in there jumbling around. And I love the feeling of turning on the flash. This is very solid. It feels like I, tr I trust this. Like this is a solid snap when you turn this. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It doesn't feel like I might break it by pushing that too hard. I will say though that the shutter release button, whenever I press this button, I don't get as confident a snap as I do when I turn the, the flash on. So when I press this button, it feels mushy and I really wish I would have gotten much better feedback when it pressed that button. Like I would love for it to have had like a very distinct bottom when you press the button. It feels like where the picture engages, you can still press the button down a little bit more. So I'm not necessarily a fan of that. Um, but this just might, this just might be my favorite like non-metal $800, $400, $500, point and shoot camera. Much like other point and shoot cameras, this one takes one AAA battery right there on the little, you just slide that out, pop in your battery positive side up, slide it in. So it's very easy to use this. And when I tell you 72 shots is a lot of shots, I mean, it's a lot of shots. So I've got 40 shots already. I've got almost half that to go. <laughs> so I'm going to be shooting up a storm. One pro tip I do have for you though is, if you see where you can rewind the film, a lot of point and shoot cameras, you kind of pull this out to engage opening the door for your film. Don't do that. You will pull this sucker right out of the camera. Uh, it snaps back in pretty easily, but you might get scared and nervous that you broke your camera. To open the door, there's just a little latch right here. You pop that down, your film door opens. And so do it that way. Don't get scared if you pull off the film rewinder. I did it myself. Because I just thought that that's, you know, how it was meant to be done. This is only meant for rewinding the film. This right here will open your door. So that's, I don't even know if I want to say that's a pro tip. That's just something I don't want you to do as well. <laughs> I made the mistake. Okay, so I got my photos back. It's also a day later. And a couple of things that I definitely feel like I need to tell you just based on this first shooting experience. One, let's talk about the flash. 
So with the camera flash, I noticed that if you turn on the flash to take a photo and the flash fully charges, it will already start charging in the second charge, but it may be a defect with my model specifically or all of these cameras. I don't know because I only have one, but let's assume you turn the flash off after taking the first shot. If you take a follow-up shot, the flash will still fire the second time, even though you have turned off the flash. So again, if you turn on the flash to take a shot, click, flash goes off, it's still in flash mode, it's charging a second flash for a second shot. Even if you immediately turn off the flash, your next shot will have flash. That is one of the things that this camera specifically has been doing, and I don't necessarily know if that's this camera or all cameras, but there is a workaround. If you know you need to use a flash, turn it on, and then turn it off, and then take your photo. You will only get flash for that shot. You will not get flash again for the second shot. It's a little annoying, but that's what I found out. That was, that was my workaround. The second thing I observed when using this camera is, because it's a half frame camera, I found that where I expected my view to always be dead center, it actually ended up being that my images would be either slightly left or slightly right based on the composition. How I know this, I remember framing certain elements around the apartment explicitly edge to edge. It was like a perfect square or a perfect rectangle. And when I got the shots back, I could clearly see that there was some either left bias or right bias in the image. That's just something that I understand. I get it. It's splitting a frame in half, so that might be something that happens. The workaround that I can communicate here is give yourself extra space, which is unfortunate because we're already cutting the frame in half. But because I wasn't able to guarantee that it was going to center frame everything that I was center framing, the best workaround is give yourself a little bit more space just to make sure. Uh, you can always crop in later. It's worse than not having it in the first place. All in all, I'd have to say that I really love shooting with this camera. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I loved getting 72 shots out of a roll, especially right now with some of my favorite film stocks almost impossible to find at retail price. It's a huge godsend. So anybody who enjoys using film cameras for Instagram or social media, I think you're in luck. You're still going to get good enough image quality, even if you take half the frame and blow it up. You're still going to get better image quality than what the biggest size screen cell phones is capable of. And why that's awesome is you get 72 shots per roll. Like... I, I can't say it enough, but that is my favorite feature, is just how much you can actually get out of this camera. Now knowing what I know, I know how to use this camera excellently, and I can't wait to put another roll through it and just make sure that everything was great. Um, yeah. Highly recommend this product. 10 out of 10. 9 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. <laughs>